I want to open up with a quote by the Vandals, an old band. America stands for freedom, but if you think you're free, try walking into a deli and urinating on the cheese. Welcome. So here I've just spent the last hour looking at bird's eye views. All sorts of bird's eye views. Here you can see almost every city, often town, has these bird's eye view maps. And oftentimes these streets are just laid out to perfection in a very early time period. Early, mid, and late 1800s. And I surveyed my property. I helped the surveyor do the job. It took all day to survey four points on 18 acres. All day. I was holding the poles up and he was shooting the poles with his type of camera instrument. And anyway, to lay something out like this so perfectly and equally without modern surveying equipment is just a big job. It makes me appreciate the layout of the cities, especially when we're dealing with star-forded cities. Really complex geometry. Here we can see the castle-esque city of Quebec in 1755, a bird's eye view. And just really, really official. All of these having such an official and legitimate feel. And actually, here's one by a Llewellyn Dodge and Company. And they are claiming to be mining and real estate brokers. So these are like the first realtors way back. And no joke, I mean, these people are printing maps. Beautiful bird's eye view maps in this time period. What realtor is going to do this today? What realtor has a hot air balloon? And really suspicious. So these are real estate brokers and auctioneers. Here they've just plastered all their major buildings around. These are the biggies, but probably everything will be auctioned and sold. So I think they weren't just making these for the people, these maps that is. These aren't just a, a nice gesture. These are actually the inheriting and selling off of these cities. These are the auctioneers, the realtors. And how can it be? Again, Seattle didn't get started until 1879, way late in the game. Let's just say 1850, let's just imagine 1849, similar to San Francisco. And similar to San Francisco, the whole city is just built out in 10, 20 years, and not just built out with some little shanty shacks, but absolute mind blowers, and just so official. Again, the way they're putting these buildings in the corner, really reminding me of what the old map makers of the realm, such as Mercator, were doing with maps, whole chunks of land, perhaps doing the same thing for royalty, selling off nations or ex-nations. And here on a smaller scale, these maps, these maps are not necessarily official maps. Though a lot of them can be found, they are kind of a little treasure hunt. And again, you can see why. These are real estate brochures, essentially, selling off entire cities. And here we can see a little town in New York. Who's ever heard of this town? But it doesn't matter. It's being sold off. The major buildings have been numbered, and the resolution isn't so great on this one. Which is what brought me to the Library of Congress, where I finally started searching for them. Here we can see Houston, Texas in 1891. Just perfect. Here it looks like some royal gardens and what must have been a star fort. And the same thing, just showing the major buildings, and just exquisite, just laid out to perfection in this early time period. Look at this road right over here. And strangely, today and even over the course of the week, as I've given thought to this subject, I found myself giving props to these people, these inheritors. Often I'm upset with them and mock their stupid narratives and am upset with their lies. 
But today and over the course of the week, I found myself giving them props, and we'll discuss that today. So why props? Why would I give these bastards props? Well, I think what they've pulled off is remarkable and beyond complex. At best, I consider myself an investigator, just a private investigator, looking into our history and what we see, or at least if what we see is true, those of us that do this type of investigating, is that these cities were already here. There was a great event or cataclysm throughout the realm, a cataclysm that wiped out every city in the world. They all look the same. They all have the same features. And then when we start seeing the earliest photographs, these cities are in ruins, seem to be abandoned, full of tech and infrastructure that is completely unnecessary for a people in this early time period. And not to mention the infrastructure that they've created is oftentimes logistically impossible for a people existing without power, without machinery, still using the horse and buggy. And then there's this clue that I'm discussing today. I mean, who was making all of these maps flying around in balloons, laying out the city? I mean, this is after the thought. This is just the map. Here is a map of 1868 Nebraska. Not so impressive in this image. But nonetheless, Nebraska. Somebody flew a balloon over here in the 1860s, were to believe, and created this map. And again, I find it important that I showed you that one image here. Showing this map as a real estate brochure, real estate and mining auctioneers. These maps are simply brochures to sell off the realm. And they're just so beautiful. If you've ever looked at the ski resort maps, most of them are made by the same person. His last name is Neus, N-E-U-S or something. Or Hughes, it might be with an H. But anyway, these have a very similar hand. In fact, if you look at the lettering, it's as if whoever made the currency was in cahoots with this map maker. And when I say the currency, I mean the money, the dollar. Let me show you an example here of one that I've saved in Coney Island. Now, I want to show you just where it says Coney Island. You'll recognize this right away. It's the same hand as the makers of the currency. Again, you can see how this could be one dollar. Just pull out a dollar, or maybe I'll throw one on the screen right here, and you'll see this is controller territory here. And again, in today's video, I'm kind of giving props to this mastermind plan that worked. Now, I don't know if we count, but I would say 99% it worked until recently. And like I said, I spent an hour before I hit record just looking at all these different maps, and it was this one that inspired me to share. So here we have something similar again. If this was an auctioneer's map, they've highlighted the major sites. The Brighton Beach Racetrack, Luna Park, which was an amusement park, Henderson's Music Hall, etc. And this year says 1906 here, but I believe it's going to be earlier. And here we get a feel for what Coney Island looked like when they found it. Now there are ruins. One of my earliest videos featured some finds by a Russian, and all these piers are lined with megalithic blocks and statues and very intricate old ruins that have been demolished and turned into piers. And I've looked at a lot of photos of early Coney Island, but I've never seen the things that I'm seeing in this bird's eye view. And I really believe that these amusement parks, roller coasters, Ferris wheels, all of this 
had an industrial application of some sort. I don't think they built all of these roller coasters like this. Dozens and dozens of roller coasters. I think there was another purpose to these. Again, a Ferris wheel here, a Ferris wheel here, some crazy kind of apparatus here. They probably just took this one apart. Way too dangerous. But nonetheless, maybe they did turn it into a ride. But I don't think all of this was built for amusement. And every single town and city, all these maps that we looked at, again, they were all surveyed and laid out beautifully. And they always have these gardens, at these massive buildings in the center. This could have been a city hall or some cathedral or something. And that's just what we've done. Oftentimes turned them into amusements, government palace centers. But I think this is giving us an idea of what we're really dealing with here. So here, all these tracks would be taken apart eventually, and we'd be left with this impression. A fountain, perhaps, here. And even now, I think it is water, but it's not decorative. It would become decorative. And back here again, another massive palace. More of this same kind of design that would become a palace landscaping. I mean, are you kidding me? A whole assortment of the same things up here? No, this is rather some kind of industry. And here you can see that this is the Luna Park. It even says Luna Park here. And this would eventually become an amusement park. But what about all this? I mean, it's similar to the World's Fair. Just hundreds of acres of massive buildings. I mean, this is just ridiculous. If these were roller coasters, there's more here than Disneyland today. Unnecessary. So again, we can just have a little look at the sheer number of these maps. I mean, why would the earliest bird's eye views of every city be completely built out? And as if the same artist was just flying around documenting these cities for the same reason. This one is a bird's eye of Philadelphia. Entered according to Act of Congress in the year 1857 by John Week in the clerk's office of the district court. So he's essentially recording this. He's filed this in 1857. Is this making claim to the entire city? And what is this? If anyone is from Philadelphia, maybe you can tell me what this machine is. Some kind of magnetron. It's huge, whatever it is. And here's another one, over here. Unbelievable. We'd be told it's a water tower, I'm sure. But again, 1857. And I recognize this. This is what they would turn into a prison, right here. A penitentiary castle. With this in the center. I mean, just unbelievable. Looks like there used to be a second one. And just fully built out. Let's look at another city. Sometimes they didn't make the little map. We just get a photo. Here's Madison, Wisconsin. And we can see an apparatus up here and one up here. Something attached to the balloon, perhaps. And this town just looking completely abandoned. It looks like a bunch of mud has been on these roads. And at best they were able to clear it off, but still stained. A car parked in the middle. Or a wagon, I'm not sure. And the capital, here in the center. Greco-Roman buildings over here. Here are some buildings looking like what we see in Paris. Or even in New York City, the flat iron building having this pointy shape. Here a massive obelisk. I mean massive, this thing is huge. Almost as tall as this capital building here. Another massive obelisk back here in the distance. And the city streets laid out to perfection once again. Here we can see Davenport, Iowa. Fully built out, looking abandoned. And if my theory is correct, everything should look nice and abandoned. And these pictures in the past are just amazing. It looks like they've stitched a few together here. I think lastly we'll look at this bird's eye view of New Orleans. Looks like a handwritten date of 1857. And again, recorded or registered in the year of 1851 in the clerk's office. So it's as if somebody is making claim. With this very image, they are quite possibly laying claim to the whole city 
and filing this claim with the clerk, the clerk's office, just like you would today. You could do this on a local level. And anyway, 1851, here we go. New Orleans. What? So you see the depictions of the horse and buggies down here? I mean, look at these ships just packed in here, just packed in here stupidly, as if these are part of the auction as well. All of this loot is being sold. And look at this. Is this the New Orleans that anybody knows? I've never been before. I mean, I saw the aftermath of hurricanes that have rolled through and just made a mess of everything, but I never saw buildings like this. Is this obelisk still here? This cathedral? I mean, this looks like a European city, just fully built out. Same type of Euro buildings, just a block. Look at this, just a block. And in fact, this is my theory. I mean, one I've put together slowly over time is that the entire realm was comprised of giant buildings. All of them, like this one we see here. This one takes up an entire block, this building. And what would happen is we would turn these into 20 storefronts. You could have a main street now, 20 little shops, all individually sold off like slices of pizza in a pie, when really it was all one building. And I believe it's the case with my small town that I lived in. This is where I noticed it. I realized that the entire town was comprised of four buildings, essentially four blocks, and they just chunked up the building into sections and put new facades and gave the illusion of an old west main street when really it was just a massive building so what's this one somebody tell me if this still exists today unbelievable just the most beautiful city in 1851 complete nothing needs to be done here look at this fit for royalty these european style buildings unbelievable so I think I'll just leave it there. Let me know your thoughts. Could these very simply be brochures selling off the old world? Of course, I don't know. Here we can see the old wall of a star fort. And what a great time. I hope you enjoyed it as much as me. I love you all. God bless. And I'll see you next week. Well, this is just going to be a quick screen recording. I'm gonna go do laundry, but I have to wait for this fire to die down a little. I could just leave it. Here you can see Chief laying in the back of the truck. I've built a little bed back there, and I'm working on a little bar on this side. And this is not mine, but I hope it's half of what this is. Recently I watched a movie, it was Jack and the Beanstalk. Actually, I've watched a couple of them, and I have another one that I plan on watching. It was from like the early 2000s, and this is one of the castles they fly around in, and the guy ended up stuck up here and figured out how to fly the castle. It seems like this one's a real pile of junk, and he barely keeps it going, but I thought it was really interesting. Long before we discussed these being machines, this family-friendly show was airing this. Here we can see the beanstalk. And really tying into the giant trees, I think. Having some kind of bridge. And I don't know if there's another realm up there. I imagine there would have to be. As above, so below. But I think it is very plausible. Especially where most of these structures have no place in our realm. Other than the occasional church service. Or, as we can see, a clock here, a timekeeping ornament. But I think when we look at everything left over from the old world, it seems to have the potential to serve multiple functions. And it doesn't matter if it's on top of a grand cathedral or just some tabletop device. Everything seems much more technological. And even if it was just ornamentation, just way over the top, way too complex for an early time period. Especially when we're dealing with a people content to eat simple foods, travel in wagons drawn by horse, and go outside to use the bathroom. And for years we've been discussing the use of mercury in these devices. And this is called a mercury arc rectifier. And there's a reason we're not taught about any of this. There's a reason that 
All of our TV shows portray something completely different, especially when discussing the Old West. And I think the idea that we have today comes from this old way of depicting it in film and other propaganda. We have been led backwards, and not just in our lifetime. For over a hundred years, our attention has been shifted in the wrong direction. And I think the reason we're able to discuss these things today is because of the internet. And in this regard, I would say that the internet is a success, and perhaps even AI being part of it now will be a success. I don't know. I try to be optimistic. But all of this is just way over the top. Certainly way over the top for these people. But I think way over the top for us too. I don't think we're looking for this. Certainly we're looking for free energy and affordable housing and good quality nourishment. But I think we would settle for half of this is what I'm saying. And so would these people. And certainly the high school student would settle for half of this building. So I think I'm off to laundry. Hopefully sometime this year I'll get a washing machine. But for today, I thank you for being here. Do have a blessed day. I love you all. God bless, and I'll see you next week.